Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. You're watching Graveyard Cars. This time on Graveyard Cars, Dave is ready to install the front grille and bumper on our legendary 1971 446 barrel Phantom Cuda. But first, Will needs to paint the grill and its components their correct factory colors, if he can remember what they are. Meanwhile, our General Lee is ready for jamming and its next phase of body work. But as Will finds out, the General Lees were not painted hemi orange. And Mark hatches a brilliant plan to motivate the body men to achieve his impossible demands. Well, he thinks it's brilliant. Coming up, on this episode of Graveyard Cars. They're coming to get you, Barbara. It has been established that the very dead are coming back to life. I'm Mark Warman, and together we bring dead muscle cars back to life. To exactly the way they were on the day they were born. The ghouls have been busy. Nice to have the whole team back together working. So far, they've installed the exhaust, the door handles, and the passenger and driver's windows in our 1971 Phantom Cuda. Speaking of Cudas, Will laid out the first pass of FK5 burn orange paint on our 1970 446 barrel Cuda. Mark will look at it, and he's gonna be a little distraught that it went so easy for me. But not to be outdone, our Phantom Cuda received its rear lights, bumper, valance, mirrors, and louvers. I mean, we did a lot of stuff, all the marker lights. I mean, it looks cool. And three new graveyard cars arrived at the shop, which the team just had to take out for a joyride. Oh, that car couldn't be any smoother. That car is a great driving car. Today, I'm getting ready to paint our grill for our 71 Phantom Cuda. Uh, Dave's kind of at a stopping point right now because he only has so much of the front end built. The grill for the Cuda was redesigned in 1971, as it was thought the 1970 model looked too docile to be a performance car. The new grill was structured to resemble the razor sharp teeth of the car's namesake, the Barracuda. Adding to its newly found ferocity, the rear lights were modified and chrome louvers were added to the fenders to simulate the Barracuda's gills. Despite its poor sales, the redesign certainly gave the 1971 Cuda a much more aggressive look. Uh, yeah, the grill is all sealed. Everything looks great as it should. So right now we're mixing up our paint to go in there and get the insides of the grill painted. Owner of the AAR came out today uh, just basically to talk about the car. A really nice, uh, nice guy. Uh, he had seen the episode where we had done the body and the paint on the AAR Cuda. Uh, the little yellow one. My name is uh, Bill Layton. I'm from Sarasota, Florida. Uh, journeyed out to your beautiful state to uh, visit my uh, old girlfriend here. So there it is. We got it washed up for you. All right. <laughs> You've been missing it? <laughs> ah, terribly. It's like a family member, you know? <laughs> you know, I was just telling the guys that when it comes to cars, we, we tend to think of them just as a as a vessel, you know, a, a way to get around transportation, at least in today's world. But stuff like this was part of people's lives and their heritage. And with a guy, it's part of who he is. That's his in so individuality. To identify with, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And when they spend 30 or 40 years in your family, they're just like a family member. So I can appreciate sure. that. People get very emotional over their cars. So do you got family that you're going to pass this on to? You got son oh, and daughter? Yeah, granddaughter. Yep. Yep. Or brother-in-law. Or brother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget yeah. brother-in-law. Yeah. yeah, he's done some, had He uh -huh. earned it. So on, on the AARs, now everybody knows what they are. Most of my fans do. 340, you got the six barrel, six pack on a TA. Yes, sir. They're the handling package cars. They're the Trans Am cars. For you, what's your favorite feature that you wouldn't want to uh. live without? Well, the, the, the strobe stripe definitely identifies the car as what it is. In a New York second, you can yeah. tell that that's an AAR. Right, you don't see them every day. I mean, they only built a couple thousand of them yes. in one year. 1,604 of the automatics. Right, I, I guess my, my personal favorite is the 346 pack. Yep, I yep. Mean, six barrel on the Plymouth, but yes. yes.
So now that that's all painted, I'm gonna head in the mixing room, mix up just a little bit of the stripper glitter and throw that over the top of it. When we put the color on, uh, the dark gray, it kind of lays, has a little texture to it, not much, but when you put the flake over the top of it is when you really get the texture feel to it. And that's kind of what Factory did back in the day. So we're just matching what they did. I hate spraying this stuff. Makes it look like I just left a strip club every time. So then I'll go see my wife and she'll be like, hey, why do you got glitter all over you? Then I have to tell my wife, well, I had to paint a coup de grill. Nowadays, that's okay, that makes sense. But a couple grills ago, it didn't make a ton of sense. So now it'll be fine. I just finished spraying the stripper glitter on it. Thing looks amazing. It's sparkly, it's shiny, came out perfect. So as soon as it dries, I'll take it over to Dave. Original engine and transmission. Yes, sir. As far as you know, any any heavy hits to the car? Any, any uh, as far as collisions, anything like that? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, you know, as the original exhaust manifolds, that was pretty Very rare. Very good thing, yep. yeah. Now this factory dent, does your buddy have anything yeah. to say about that? Uh, I, I don't know on that. Was that supported by Budweiser by chance? <laughs> it may have been. Because I, I had a lot of factory support from Schlitz Malt Liquor Bowl back in the yep. day for the dents on my car. <laughs> yep. Original seats are gone. Did he have those or did he switch them out for these? Or um, you know what happened to the, them? Uh, the interior kind of degraded. And uh, I guess about that time was when he had it painted. So he went to the black interior and he had a uh, 71 that he took the interior out of. Well, look, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna get back to work. I appreciate yes, you sir. coming out. Thank you. It's a pleasure meeting you face pleasure to face. You, nice meeting you, you too. too, keep Thank working you. on him for that inheritance. <laughs> I, I hear you. you know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're gonna get started on it right away, disassembling it, we'll get it over and get it dipped. Once it gets back from the dipper, we'll be able to inventory exactly what panels need to be replaced, what panels need to be repaired and we'll start the process. We're gonna get started on the car, get it disassembled, get it over to the dipper, start inventorying what we need to order and, and rock this thing out. Well, we're gonna make it beautiful, boss. Awesome, All I right. can't wait. If you wanna, I'll walk you out and Alrighty. get you guys back heading, heading home. Car's going back to 100% stock. I mean, this is definitely a car you don't wanna change. You know, really we're doing great at Graveyard Cars. If you if you watched our growth over the past few years, you'll see that it's grown exponentially with, with every season, uh, with every new car that comes in, and certainly with our new shop. What I want to do is start this season off right, get everybody down in the area of the body in the paint shop uh, into a rhythm like we've got in the rest of the shop. Here, my old buddy Will. I was wondering if you could give me a hand moving my toolbox. Ooh. Well, certainly. Sometimes the only way to do that is to be there, to be present. So I've made up my mind that I'm going to move my big toolbox down there so I can be one of the guys for as long as it takes before I think they're ready to, to fly on their own and truly be productive. Okay, this is kind of a tough thing to move, all right? So I have to pull this end out and around, and, and, and then you're going to push from that end while I try desperately. It weighs eight tons. Maybe you should get a smaller box. Don't need a smaller box. Too much box for you. This is the size you need when you're working on cars. Okay, hold on. You've hit Why the have you done this? You can... Why have you done this? Okay, we got to come this way, and then I got to sweep it out around. All right, not, no sweeping. No sweep. No sweep. Now we'll come your way. Are you coming my way? Yeah. Okay. And now turn it around again, and then this way. Yeah, you're good. Okay. It's a big box. It's a big old toolbox. That's too much box for you. No, it's just right. Where are we going? Uh, straight through this door here. Oh, you're gonna swing it about? Okay. Huh? Go through, probably easier to go back to the engine room if you go through this door. I see what you're doing. Not going in the engine room, going in the body shop. Why is this staying in the body shop? Mm -hmm. I got a bottleneck in your area. And so what it's gonna require from here is El Capitan. Oh, no, 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 no excrement. All right, 
I'm going to go down there and I'm going to work with your guys. I'm going to work with the team. I'm going to build their morale and can believe that this no, is possible. Not. Yes, this I am. That's not what you do. It is what I do. So him being out here 24-7 just isn't going to work. Now, now, this is unfortunately going to come back to you, too, That's because fine. we're going to start pumping out two to three times the amount oh. of work. And so this walking around like your bottoms of your feet are rocking chairs everywhere you go like that, and you're just all cool <laughs> with your sombrero, ain't going to work. You're going to have to poo it and do it, stink it and drink it. You know what I'm saying? We have a bigger problem. And get it. Who's going to write checks? Oh, I can write the checks in my evening That's times while you guys are home playing house. Oh, yeah. Shit. So You're why don't right you, chance. why don't all y'all go open the door? Big Papa Bear's gonna get the big mother load in here. This is just absolutely ridiculous, bringing a huge box over. It's just a waste of space, waste of time. Oh, yes. This is needed down here, my friend. There's magic tools in here, just like your hat. <laughs> just like your hat. There we go. All right. This isn't gonna work. It's gonna work great. No. Is that in your way, George? Ryan? Huh. Seems to be somebody's creating an obstacle in here. Josh? It's not my toolbox. Josh? Josh, that box work right there for you, buddy? It's not my way. That's what you're gonna... You see what we're getting at? Look at George's box. Look at Josh's box. Hey. We're getting ready to give our Phantom Cuda here a facelift. So uh, we got our grill still to put on. Uh, bumper obviously and the lower volants and uh, we got all our pieces sitting right here so got all our parking lights installed and everything and lo and behold there's the cherry on top of the sundae right there well, i don't know about a cherry <laughs> we got the grill completely painted for the phantom came out literally amazing that flake that goes on top of it it's bright it's got a nice pop out in the sun and i can't wait to see it installed in the car oh that looks awesome man oh isn't that i know i could put flake on that for days that looks great it looks man. so good that's perfect these are my favorite grills yeah, there's so much still to do on this grill. You getting ready to put it in now? Uh, yeah, I gotta put all this all this stuff on it. No Alyssa? She bail on you today? Yeah, yeah, she's not not around, so I'm I'm on my own on this one, so. Yeah, yeah it'll work. Wow! Nice, huh? Yeah, did we just get this? Yeah. I think, That's uh, awesome. Just a few days ago. Yeah, when I heard we got the new Strango, I was really excited. I wanted to go out and see if they would teach me how to drive it, because that's just one more thing I can help everybody with. They ain't gonna fling me off. Let's, I didn't see anywhere in the instruction manual where it said to, whoa. Okay, well, she fell off it. Yeah. That's good. All right. You want some figure eights? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh, are they go in from the inside? Yeah, well these yeah, these go in from the inside. Out this way. Yeah, it's I mean It's like a JC Whitney kit. I assume it goes from the inside. Maybe yeah. it don't. Well, nope. Uh, Dave doesn't work with paint stuff, so a lot of times he just kind of shoves things where they don't belong. <laughs> <laughs> Did that no, nah, that can't be right in here. Does yours fit in there? Well, I don't around, dude. You gotta push it. I don't wanna scratch it. I know. It. That's what I'm wondering too. What a stupid idea was. Hmm. I'd much rather have you scratch it than come say we'll fix it as opposed to me scratch it. <laughs> I mean, we had some some trouble putting those uh, little grill inserts. <laughs> we both did, so we we're kind of fighting them. And so the patient's level's kind of on high alert right now with the Phantom Cuda anyway, being the deadline so short. So step one, pull okay. under it, right? Yep. Get under the car in the center, through the arrows. Mm -hmm. You line those up with the the support there. The car. And then try to be square when you get under it. Okay. Okay. Do the. This one is the one that closes the the deals. So go ahead and uh, yep. hit the towards me. Yep. So just so nice back and it easy. straight out. Yep. Ooh. She's fine. Huh? She's fine. And then should I just go straight out? You don't sure, you go, go anywhere wherever else? you want now. It's your dad you have to deal with if you scratch it up. Well, I don't know how far I want to take it out. I don't know if I could get it back in. Well, you're going to have to now. We're training you, right? We'll help uh, you. Okay. So go ahead. Should I just take it over by the truck and park? Sure. Kind of park it and then so we can bring it back? Okay, take it over to the truck and do a U-turn with it. Oh, Should be enough room. Can't wait. It's pretty smooth, huh? It is. This thing's really nice. It is. This makes our job a lot easier than having to come out here and hand push so all these vehicles. Me and Will were working on the grill here. We had a lot of trouble with these little inserts. You know, kind of played around, put them in different holes and stuff like that. Each one has a specific angle, how it goes into in the grill. 
So we obviously had the wrong part in the wrong hole and, and so on. But regardless, we figured it out. Hmm. Well, look at that. I've tried almost every hole. Up oh, there it is, right there. And this you one found the right in. hole? Found the right hole. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, so they are specific for each spot. And of course, they're not marked. So you just got to guess. So I'm going to grab some tabs. Oh, brown. Did you find one? Yeah. Nice. Here, see if this will push down on that sucker. You can, yep, whoops. That's cool. Kind of get it on there. I know, what a pain right. in the butt, huh? So it turns out that we did have the right parts. We just had them in the wrong spots in the grill. So what we did was we just kind of sized them up on the backside uh, in each little hole until we figured out uh, which one they went into specifically and then placed it in that spot and then everything worked out perfectly. Handles pretty good. <laughs> See, otherwise you'd have 10 guys out here pushing the car. I know. So just make sure you don't bang into the Roadrunner. Yeah. Hey, she's doing great. No pressure from her dad being here, so she's doing really good. I think I'm going to give her a 10. What do you think? Uh, maybe an eight. No. 10 might give her a big head, like her dad. All right. Oh, hey, there you go. So I'm certified and trained, right? You can be our official car mover. What? Just the giant scratch in it. What? Oh, did you tell her not that. to do that? I did tell her not to do that. I didn't do that. It's brand new, and I didn't do it. I haven't even, I don't know the code. I don't. Oh, God. I mean, I didn't put the scratch there. I don't know how that happened. I didn't do it. I didn't, I mean, I feel like you would hear it, right? Well, look at me. Are you sure hey. that wasn't there? Wait. No, the was, time, no. I gotta go. I gotta yeah, go to work. Of course, that's convenient for Royal, isn't it? You know what? Well, you can tell him. Maybe my I'm dad not... won't notice. So no, I'm not gonna be the one that tells my dad. I know nothing. Right, because that sounds like what your dad wouldn't notice. The giant scratch in the brand new Stringo. Okay, or I have some, a lot of different colors of red nail polish. Bring that in. Can, I'm sure it'll match. Or Will can maybe touch it up. Well, see, I don't Usually, see why we need to bring any attention to it. Mom's a word. <laughs> Does that happen a lot? Or is that something Just that's pretty typical? What about our old one? Did I have a scratch? I honestly can't believe they're all different sizes. I thought they'd all be the same. I know, I never thought that them sitting in the box, we just had to play around with it enough to get it, but yeah. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Yeah, let's check it out. So this goes in pretty easy now, don't it? Yeah, I got all these old chrome pieces to put on, all the surrounds, the... Well, that's pretty brainless. I mean, I see why you have Alyssa helping you. Building a car is not brainless. What Dave does is awesome, especially the amount of time that he does it, jumping from car to car to car. The work he has Alyssa do is kind of brainless. Have her do all the thoughtless work. <clears throat> hey guys. Hey. Oh, hey. 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 Good. How's it yeah. going? Yeah. How's it going? Didn't start without me, right? No. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. It's kind of irritating when Will comes in and says that I'm doing brainless work because I'm I'm everywhere. So glad you're oh, here. Yeah, um, glad you could there's show There's a lot up. of detail work, a lot of hard stuff. So I figure you can probably just go ahead and take over now because you're pretty quick-witted and sharp and very detail-oriented. This is. What, what's wrong with you? Nothing. I just did, I didn't think you were here yet. Cool. Yeah, I, I mean, well, I was out helping Mike. Okay. Like, what the crap, Will? That was super rude. I do so much around here, and I'm willing to help him any chance I get. Okay, well, uh, we got a lot of the hard work knocked out already. Yeah. Which is? So, uh, those grill those inserts. Oh, okay. And of course, the paint work. That yeah. was the hard I work. Know. Yeah, it Well, awesome. Great. Well, then. It's easy from here. So. Well, cool, then I showed up at the right time. Right? Yep, yeah, it would have yeah. been perfect if it was already in. Then you would have showed up the yeah. right time. <laughs> yeah, you could leave yeah. and come back and say, okay, what do you need, I guess? You're here. No, so, no that's no, good. Fine. Yeah. No. Will's a lot like my dad, where he thinks what he's doing is like the most important and the hardest job in the shop. So he thinks that he's out there painting and that nobody else in the shop could possibly be working as hard as him or as efficient as him. Definitely. Are you going to help us or no, what, are you, I, what are you doing? I, I was actually helping because we couldn't find you. Okay, well, I'm here now. Oh. So. It's all right, I, I covered, I helped out. I picked up where you fell short, so no worries. Bye. All right, are you ready to get started? All right, I'm ready. Okay, there's all kinds of stuff to go in here. My first order of business is the new shop foreman out here. All right. You got a problem That's kind of my position. Well, you were shop foreman, now you're assistant shop foreman. Assist, assistant shop foreman? Well, you're assistant to the shop foreman. So I'm your assistant? Yeah. So you move that Office, thing out BBC, here. Gareth. I got demoted. I don't think I can even say that. He demoted me like that while he was out here. So I'm an assistant to him now. You moved your box out here. Yeah, I'm ready to go to work. And I lost my title? 
Well, you lost your title when you only produced one car in the last two and a half months ago. <laughs> there was three. <laughs> okay. He is going to be my right-hand man. He is going to learn from me everything that I'm going to teach these guys. So when the new crews come in, he can continue over the years to keep that rhythm and that system and that uh, standard operating procedure in place. Okay, uh, the floor got pushed up over there on that right. side. I want to make sure Ryan gets that pushed back down again. I don't want to do any body work. This is an undercoat car. It's a factory undercoating car. Then I'm going to start working on doing the body work on this one because Challengers and me get along like that. Okay, I, well, is what I've done. Remember the black RTSC 4.6 pack, <coughs> yeah, four speed Ryan did super it. track pack, one of 135. Yeah, Ryan well, did. Ryan did the left quarter and then we took it outside and you could see down the side of it. So I brought so this I car that. in. I got the quarters. So then it went on to win 27 strip, strip trophies in a row, first place all over the Looks entire nice. Northwest. So you can actually, literally, go right to your toolbox, so. get your tools, and this is ready. This is to ready start to go on right now. Here. But everything that's in the shop right now is a major job. We got a Roadrunner. We're turning into a Superbird. You know, the General E. The front was caved up. The back was caved up. They're not easy jobs. My job is out here from now on. This is it, 24/7. Me out here with my main gang, right there. Got my friend George, my friend Ryan over there. Josh, the new guy. This is my home. Okay, so then in my world now. <clears throat> you want me to get <clears throat> you a cart set up with your tools? Uh, I got to go to the office, actually. For what? I got stuff to do. We just went over four cars. I'm gonna be back in a few minutes to do some body work on that. So you want me to get everything set Round up? Round me up some 80, some 120, some 150, and 220. Two gallons of filler and some honey to reduce it down. I need some thinner scotch brights and three paddles and different lengths to put it together and one putty knife to stir it up. As you were, gentlemen. We have that ready. What? <laughs> we have it ready. You don't have to go up there. We got it. We... Well, I got a call. Well, I got to make a call. You said No, you said you were going to be out here for our question. Typical Mark. Comes out here 100 miles, starts to set shit up, makes a mess, slows down production, then leaves. I'm assuming he's going back to his office, back to what he does good at writing those checks. Uh, but awesome. 71 little 343 speed uh, manual CUDA. It's, it's nice to have, I mean, a book is great to look and see how things go together, but you can't beat something in person that you can touch and look at and see what it, the way it goes together. So. This is by far the best way to, to figure it all out, but. I don't wanna say Dave relies on me to help him out because Dave is completely capable on his own but I think that it's nice to have an extra set of hands there, you know, to hand tools, kind of even be just a table, honestly, sometimes. All right. Well, that's the last one. Boy, those things were kind of difficult to they get were. in there. Yeah, it's a good thing we have the other grill to look at because then I realized where those clips go. So they go in the bottom of those trims. So this thing just basically locks in the front, snaps in the bottom. So hopefully these go a little bit easier. So and kind of tip it that way, but I think it'll look. be good. Yeah. So right now I have the generally all masked up. It is in the booth. The quarters are off it, so I can paint the inside of the quarters, the inner and outer wheelhouses, and underneath the package tray. The General Lee is the name given to the 1969 Dodge Charger driven in the television series, The Dukes of Hazard. The General Lee is famous for its Dixie horn, chase scenes, stunts, and of course, its long jumps. Out of all the Chargers used in the series and feature films, approximately 17 still exist in various states of repair. This General Lee is the freeway jump car from the 2005 Dukes of Hazard film and has the distinction of holding the record for the farthest jump in General Lee history. Right now, the body men have done a great job getting the car put together, but they can't finish it until I jam it. I can't jam it till we find out the color. We've heard Hemi orange, Hugger orange, torch red, flame red. Nobody actually knows what color this particular car was supposed to go. We've been trying to get in touch with the guy that actually built the car. Um, I haven't heard back from Mark yet, so I'm gonna go check with him, see if he's heard back, and see if he has an answer on what color it's supposed to be. Hey boss, I got the General Lee in the booth. Do we know the color yet? Those cars were painted 1975 
Corvette Flame Red. Okay. How do you have a Hemi Orange factory charger and say no thanks? It's a f sin. We, they didn't paint that f thing Hemi Orange. Wow. So I want you to look on the machine. Flame Red, 1975. I want to match it against the deck lid that came off of the car. Okay. I'm going to rub a spot out on the deck lid. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit, or should be a little bit redder than the one on the car. And that is because reds and oranges, when they fade, they turn lighter. Right. Okay, perfect. But that's the color I want to go on the on the car for right now to start with. Sounds good. Okay. So I went out and talked with Mark. He talked to the gentleman that built the car. It goes 1975 Corvette Flame Red. First off, there's a lot of conjecture. There's a lot of opinions. A lot of people thought it was Hemi Orange because I guess on camera it probably did look Hemi Orange, EV2. Problem is that isn't the color it was. All right, back in the series, there's, there's documentation from the guys that built the car that those things were painted Big Bad Orange, which is an AMC color, and that's what looked best on camera. Then you can go online, like I say, and there's all over the map as to what really is supposed to be on the cars that were in the movie and what's not supposed to be. But according to J.R. Barton, the guy that built the cars, he said that those were the ones that are the flame red, the 1975 Corvette color flame red, which sounds like it's a red, but it's an orange. And I'll take the other one and we'll kind of put it in there to make sure we're gonna be able to slip over right. Have enough reveal on there. How does yours seem to sit? Pretty decent? Yeah, see, that's good. That's what you want. Hey. Okay, cool. How you looking over there? You Looks get them all good. bent? Awesome. Boy, that's a workout, huh? It is. It's, it's just stressful because it's so delicate. Yeah, and all how many plastic. pieces just went into this, just the grill? You know, I, know. I mean, it's, it's amazing. But let's let's check it out here. Let's flip it up. See what this baby looks like with all that stainless on there. Wow, check that out. Ooh, ooh look at the shine. Oh, that's amazing, huh? Boy, it really sets that paint off. Okay, so we have our GM colors from back in the day, a Nissan in there, Subaru. But right here, we have our Corvette orange flame on this, 75 to 76. That was the color they did it. So I click on that, and it's called red. They said they did it flame red, but on here they call it an orange. Here's our formula. Oh crap, I just realized we're supposed to have a bracket right here that comes off, that goes to these, and they're a unique bracket. Okay. And, oh man, that's gonna totally hold us up because without those, we can't put the grill on. Okay, so the color of this jam right now is quite a ways off from what we have. So I'm gonna go grab the boss, have him come in, take a look at it, and see what he wants to do. So we're missing some brackets to finish putting on the grill on the Phantom Cuda. Dave took me into the reference room and showed me what the brackets look like in the book. I'm up here because I helped my dad and Mike organize this parts room, and I think I remember seeing some of the brackets. So I'm hopefully gonna find them because if not, then we're kind of screwed. We can't we can't move forward with the Phantom. Okay, I know there was a bend just for grill stuff up here. Just find that area. Nope. No. Yes. Yes. Ah. Yes. I can't wait to give these to Dave because he's gonna be super excited. I found them and probably surprised. Also, can't wait to rub this in Will's face because I just saved the day. Dave. Hey, oh, you got him. How awesome think? is that? If you take these out, you can basically drop this bumper down. And I got a bungee cord on there. It'll kind of sit just like that. That's the only place we need it. So now we can put oh, our nice. grill in, and then we just swing our bumper back up. All the gaps are set. Everything's tight. So what we can do is we'll put our little retainers in here. These little deals go in that little funky hole I was telling you about. These will snap in and slide in like that, so hang on to that one. These go on a particular side. If you kind of, they'll spin around like that, going upside down, there's a tab there. So that tab will go into that locating hole there. And then when that one sits up, see how it's not touching quite as bad? So this will work on that side. And if you want to take that one, and you got a bolt, see if you can get it started. A lot of times, the, there's so much paint in those holes 
that the bolt's not gonna wanna start too well, so I didn't come over there and kinda run a socket in on it. So that little locking tab, either you can have one bolt in there and it'll keep it from spinning. So I got the underside buffed, I checked it to the color, and the color is off, so I'm gonna grab Mark, see what he thinks before we go any further. Did you do the spray out already? DBC? Well, you never reported back to me. I just it got It smells you. like DBC. 1610. No metallic. All right, go ahead and just read off the toners then, please. Because like, I actually got the list right here. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, just go ahead and okay. shoot them out. Okay, okay, let's go. All right. There's 1610 in there, I think. Nope. No what? Oh, sorry, there's no 1610. I never said 1610. There's 1610 in there, I think. Uh, 648? Yes. A, a drop or two? Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I always get the, the smell is all, 1686? No, that's a metallic. Yeah. Uh, 1622. No. 622. 622. No. 624. No. 608. No. What's in it? Oh, DMD toners, DMD oh, toners, whatever. DMD. How's it look to you? Well, uh, the deck lid's got metallic in it. And the deck lid's EV2. That's what I was thinking too. So, I was so the car's a 70, even though on the show they're 69s, they had converted a 70. I talked to J.R. Burton, this, which available was available on 69. That's why it's got the E and EV2, except in 69, it'd just be V2. And 70, they have to refer back to the original date. So I was thinking about flipping the deck lid over. Anyway, that's going to be the wrong wrong call. Now, interestingly, a lot of people thought that the General Lee was EV2 Hemi Orange. A that's what I think did. is crazy, that they took a... They just got lucky and had an original yeah, deck that, lid. Yeah, how cool would that be? Or do you think the whole car was... Oh, this whole entire car was this? Who knows, right? Who, who could have been, but you know, panels get switched all the right. time. But this deck would definitely started life on a car that was coded for V2. That would have been cool if V2 they would have done V2. it. V2 or EV2. Excuse me. Can I check something here? That's. I mean, just look at that. How much? How much difference there is. Between this bloodish, this is a lot bloodier than this is right here. That's how far that's oxidized. All right. So this is even, like I say, this is probably lighter than it was intended to be. Right. But you can see that it's there. Well, I can see that this is a lot milkier than that. This is, this is possibly where that car started life at. Correct. Because this just has a pinkish, start, yes. already starting to get a pinkish look to it. Mm -hmm. Um. So I think, I think it started off this color. Really, really close. Let's go yeah. check a couple parts in the pod out back real quick. We got the original doors and fenders off it. Let's just check that. So Mark came out, agreed it doesn't match the bottom. We flipped the deck lid over, buffed the top. Matches the top perfect. That's when we realized this is a true original Hemi Orange charger, which kind of sucks because if they would have just painted Hemi Orange, this person would have a General Lee factory Hemi Orange and it would still be an orange car. So. Kind of sucks having a painted Corvette red. So far, so good. Yeah, it's been so pretty easy. these are going to be the only ones we're concentrating on. So go ahead and grab a side of that. Now this here is the only tab we need to make sure we get this one underneath, like this. Okay. Okay. So Let's we're see. good there. And this you got to kind of manipulate it around. So it's got to kind of go around these nervous. headlight bezels because yeah. it'll go all the way in. Should we work on, like, should I let you get your side in and then? Yeah, let me get this one here okay. set up a little bit. So you gotta kind of move it around. Look at this bracket. Okay, I gotta bend that bracket down a little bit. Like See, that. I don't like that sound. That scares me. I, I know, I but don't. the good thing is, is that this thing is all new, so. Yeah. Okay, so there's that one. All right, cool. Wow. Well, we got all those snug down. We got a great reveal. I mean, everything looks fantastic. It's nice and tight. All right, so now, yep, we get to swing our bumper up. So go ahead and grab your bolt up there. See it sitting right yeah. up in the thing there? And I always grease these so that they're real easy to put in and then you don't have to worry about them rusting and freezing up in there. So 
And what we'll do is swing this up nice and easy, and it should slip right over that bumper like that. Ooh, look at that. Okay. And then you gotta kinda get underneath it here and you'll see where that bolt goes. And it'll go right on that into the frame rail. See the hole there? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can kind of get that and then I'll get our ratchet ready. Here, you got enough. It might be solid, man. Now I want to kind of look at it. Perfect. They've got all the original pieces off the car. <clears throat> That's awesome. It is. What color is the inside of the door? Uh, oh, that's EV2, that's Hemi Orange too, huh? So that's a true... So I guess the car started like Hemi Orange. That's, that's kind of awesome cool. That would they would have painted it that color. Almost wouldn't have had to do much. Uh, right? Yeah. You do that pretty well. Do what pretty well? Polish off that uh, polish. oxidation. I'm not polishing. I thought you were just compounding that rubbing. oxidation. You're rubbing? Yeah. Okay. Well, you rub well, sir. Mm. Look how pink this already is, yeah, though. It's... I mean, comparatively, even to the bottom half of the door. Right. It's really hard to it get. It goes pink quick. It's a, yeah. Yeah, that's almost completely pink. Yeah. A little better down there? Nope. That door is pink. I think it just lost its pigment. That's a little, that's a little bit better. Well, you're in a cave, so. Yeah, I know. Still though. I still wonder if this needs to be a little bit redder. I really, I really do wonder that. But I think that this, this was done with a cheaper paint. I think that's the right paint code. And I think PPG is just pretty well spot on with it. So the only options we have is we can paint it the flame red 1975 Corvette or try to tint it to this. God, this is just pink. This is turning pink, this whole door. Mm -hmm. You see that, right? 100%, yes, I do. How about under where that mirror goes? That thing goes pink. Yeah, it that is orange pink there. fast, yeah. We're gonna paint it the, the Corvette color. Flame red. You know, that'll make a lot of the flaming General Motors owners happy. Not flaming. <laughs> ah, sorry. The flame red that's Corvette not, owners what you... happy. Yeah. You Can't wait issues. to watch your Facebook after this comes out. <laughs> Whatever. Everything to you is a sexual pun, is What the f Yeah. Who yeah. was talking sexual? Everything to you is a sexual pun. Yeah. All the body men are talking about it, too. All two of them? Yeah. Well, there's three. It's two and a half. There's Bicurious George, too. <laughs> How you doing, George? Still looking on the other side, buddy? After further research, Mark decided to paint the car Big Bad Orange, a popular color on the AMC AMXs and the color used on the General Lees in the 2005 film. Originally, the television series painted the General Lees flame red to compensate for how the television film stock reproduced colors. However, because the filmmakers for the 2005 movie used a film stock with better color accuracy, the General Lee was painted with AMC's Big Bad Orange. And since Chrysler eventually bought AMC, it's still technically Mopar. Since Mark said the color looked good, which it does, I'm gonna head in the booth and actually get all the jam work done now. Right now I'm getting ready to mix up the sealer. I have a black sealer and a white sealer, so I'm gonna mix the two together and have a gray sealer. It's a real transparent color. And then we only got our quart in. I have two gallons coming in, so I have like a half gallon sprayable, which should be enough. It's gonna be close, but I'm gonna tint the sealer to match closer because it does cover better when it's a darker gray. So I'm gonna go through, seal it all, and then I'll start laying my color down. I have to switch hats because the uh, that hat really doesn't hold a respirator that well. So, got to change hats, which is make Mark happy because it's back to the magic hat. Now, if I tell him I did it with that hat, he'll walk in and say, "God, this doesn't look right." I tell him I did it with this hat, he won't even look it over, and he'll say it's beautiful. So, I guess it's easier in the long run. Um, I'm excited to paint this car. A because it's a General Lee. B, it was actually in the movie. It was a cool launch car. And C, the, the body guys have been waiting for two weeks with 
kind of at a standstill because I haven't been able to come up with the color yet. So there's a bunch of reasons why it's exciting to get it done, but it's very nice to have this thing painted and back to the body shop, have the quarters put on. So obviously I did the texture coating on the quarter panels already. So that way, because once the quarters are put on, you can't go past the wheel wells. So now that that's done, at, when you actually paint, you're actually able to get paint all the way across, where if the car is put together, you can't do it. And if you can do it, it's not gonna be that good of a job. So this way, painting those hard to reach pieces are actually fully clear coated. It's never gonna rust. It looks like the outside of the car. So when this car is assembled, if the owner ever wants to take it apart, look underneath there, the inside looks just as nice as the outside does. So it's a huge benefit doing it this way. So the uh, car looks amazing. Um, everything went just as planned, got it all done. I'm going to pull it out of the booth as soon as it's dry, give it to George and Ryan for them to start putting the quarters on it. Solving the mystery of the General Lee's paint was only one of the many accomplishments the ghouls achieved. Will painted and helped Dave assemble the grill for our 1971 Phantom Cuda. Alyssa was trained and became a certified Stringo car hauler. Well, sort of. After much research, debate, and an 11th hour change of mind, it was decided that the General Lee got painted its original movie series color, Big Bad Orange. And Mark hauled his mammoth toolbox out to the body shop in an effort to personally assist the body men to impossible greatness. A lofty plan, which he quickly abandoned. Now, all that's left to motivate them is an FJ5 Limelight Monolith engulfing Will's workspace. Mark really doesn't put a lot of thought into things. He gets an idea, so he goes at like 100 miles an hour, then it kind of burns out, then he's done. So as you can see, the toolbox is right in the way. We can't even get cars throughout here. So right now he's kind of slowed the process down, but we're gonna get that taken care of here soon. Mark actually has built us a room just for doing body work because of all the dust that keeps it out of the paint shop. So we're just going by the guidelines that he's put in place. So he cannot be happy about it, but he really can't say about it because that's what that room was for. I don't see why it wouldn't work for him. He's got everything he needs. He's got his toolbox. Now I'll just go grab the car. We'll put it right here in the middle. Look at this. This is great. Now that I went from the foreman to assistant to Mark, um, I'm assisting him by getting his stuff where it needs to go. That way he can get right to work when he gets out here. We're trying to be as efficient as possible. So when he rolls out here, he's ready to go. Now we, he's got plenty of room in here, work around it. Yeah. He's got a little light coming in from outside. So, nice. so when Mark comes out and wants to know, we say, hey, we put you in the new mudroom. Has anybody built. seen Mark? And then he'll be just like, oh yeah. That should be right out there all day now. Yep. Right on, it won't be hard to find him then. Well, he said two days left alone, he could finish that car. Two days, huh? That's what, what does it usually take? Two months. Yeah. Everything back in the body shop is back to normal and we should be good to go from this point forward. Well, I know what his reaction is going to be. It's not going to be a good one, but it does make sense because he built that room for that reason. So he can't get too upset. <laughs>